How many times have you been out to the range, your rocket's loaded up on the rod, you go through the countdown, get to zero, push the button, and yeah, nothing. The igniter spits out, doesn't light the motor for whatever reason, and there you are stuck with one igniter for your expensive motor. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an inexpensive, easy to make igniter that will light any um, sugar motor, such as this PVC motor, or any commercial motor, such as an APCP motor. And uh, you'll have plenty uh, to share with others and your friendships will grow exponentially as you uh, share these igniters with other people. Anyways, uh, they're fun to make. And one of the th reasons why we make things on this channel is because we can, and then we learn things and we share them with others. Okay, let's get started. The igniter formula is made by Richard Naka, and uh, I've made a lot of these igniters. They work really well. The components are potassium perchlorate, which I got from the fireworks cookbook. I'll leave a link in the description. This may not be legal in your country. I'm not really sure. You'll just have to check and see. Then I have 20% uh, uh, charcoal. Uh, it's hardwood charcoal. I don't have it here, but it's just regular hardwood charcoal. 10% uh, aluminum powder, 400 mesh. Now the one I have is, um, oh, it's this one here. It's uh, air float charcoal. It's really fine. Uh, it seems to work okay. Uh, I have not had any problems with it. And then 5% uh, red iron oxide, which is right here. This is at least one lifetime supply. Uh, <laughs> this is five pounds. You don't really need that much of it, but it was cheap and I thought, hey, this looks like a great deal. Anyways, that's more than you'll need. Uh, for a long time. So uh, you also use this uh, nitrocellulose lacquer here, a regular brushing lacquer. If you don't have access to that, you can use a, a clear nail polish. That'll work just as well and probably even easier to mix up with that because it comes in a smaller bottle. I have nail polish remover. This is the acetone type. Make sure you get it that's uh, pure acetone. It makes it uh, easier to pour out of this small bottle. You can get it in a quart or something like that or even larger sizes, but this makes it really easy to manage in this size. Okay, let's take a look at the powder real quick like. This is our Spitfire mix. I'll pour a little bit out on this sticky note here so you can take a look at it. And this is the charcoal powder that I used. I'll leave a link in the description for that also. Now, the charcoal powder, along with the red iron oxide, you have to be careful that you don't breathe in the dust from it. Any metal or really any powder, you just don't want to breathe in the dust. It's not going to be good for you. This is just a regular medicine bottle. Uh, so I'll pour the powder out. You can take a look at it. Nothing special here as far as the way it looks, but uh, you can see the charcoal in it there. Now, uh, you'll find that uh, even in this medicine bottle that uh, the acetone is like an escape artist. <laughs> uh, it do doesn't seem to matter how tight I put the top on. Uh, maybe you can find some sort of container that uh, won't let it dissolve. But if it does, it's not really a big deal. You can just put a little more acetone in it and it'll dissolve right away. Uh, it just takes a couple minutes. And uh, so that seems to work pretty well. And the nail polish remover is pretty cheap too. Now, if you were to put a propane torch on this, you'd find that it really does not light that easily. It takes a lot of heat to get this, uh, this ignition powder going. And uh, right now I don't have any um, uh, acetone in it. I don't have it mixed up. It's usually you mix it up as a slurry and I'll cover that in just a minute. For the igniter, I use an E-match. These are 19 and a half inches long or 50 centimeters. I use the shorter ones, which are 12 inches long or 30 centimeters for my dual deploy. But uh, you want a long enough igniter to get it all the way up into the motor. And uh, these will have plenty to spare. I order them off eBay. Uh, it takes a couple weeks, two to three weeks to get them. So you have to plan ahead for that. I always order um, more than I need because you tend to use them up and it does take a while to get them. So anyways, this is an order of 100. You can order them also in 50s or in other, uh, other amounts. So the first thing we'll need to do is take the uh, plastic cover off here and you'll see the end of the igniter has a little bit of pyrogen on it and that's what's going to um, ignite our mixture and then the next thing you want to do is bend it over uh, like so 
and kind of squeeze this loop here. So what you want to do is uh, you want to have the igniter tip uh, fairly close to the wire as possible here. And there'll be a little bit loop right here and that'll be fine because it will fill in with pyrogen and uh, make the igniter work better. Now, if you want to uh, make the igniter a little bit longer or the loop a little bit larger for like say a J motor or something like that, you could do that. A little shorter, perhaps for an H motor. And uh, some of them, I just give extra dips like uh, this one's a little thinner, I might use this for an H. This one is a little thicker, I might use that for a J. Uh, just give you a couple of options there as far as what you need. You want to mix our pyrogen up really well. Uh, I just use this craft stick and the consistency should be about that of pancake mix somewhere around there. Uh, you can just kind of lift it up and I think you can see that there, get an idea of a good place to start. And if you get it too thin, don't worry about it because the acetone, it evaporates really quickly. So it, you just have to wait a few minutes and, and try again. Once you get the consistency to the way you like it, I suggest that you make a bunch of them at one time because it does take a little bit of trial and error to get it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my igniter here and I'll dip it into the mixture and then I'll bring it up like this and let the drip kind of run up and down it here a little bit. I might do that a couple of times and then when I get it just to the way I want it I'll just blow on it lightly and that just kind of sets the whole thing. And then I'll hang it up and start on the next one and then come back and dip them as, as needed. I'll go ahead and start with this and we'll see what happens. This is kind of messy. Right, so I'm going to let it drip off like that. Kind of let it drip a bit. And then I'll bring it back. Let it kind of even out a bit and that's that's pretty good for a first coat so i like the way it looks blow on it lightly to kind of set it hang it upside down like that and then we'll start on the next one and give them usually about three uh dips does it and uh just according to what, what you want and how thick the mixture is okay in between each uh dipping session you want to mix this up really good again make sure it's all uh, uniform and uh, I added a little more of the uh, nail polish remover to it or acetone to uh, thin it out just a bit and so I'll just go ahead and set this aside one more time and we'll dip our igniter in there I'll pull it up let it drip off just a bit Turn it upside down and then I'll blow on it, let it set and uh, two dips looks pretty good there. Uh, I could do another one but I think that's looking, yeah that looks alright. I think I'll just go ahead and go with that. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was that I put a couple of teaspoons of the lacquer in it, uh, the clear brushing lacquer. Make sure it's the uh, solvent type and not water based. Uh, this is just a binder, kind of hold everything together. And if you find that uh, they tend to be brittle and start uh, breaking off, you can put a little bit more lacquer in it. Just mix it to the way you want it. You just need enough to hold everything together. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think I'll make a whole bunch more and uh, that'll be it for today.